going to see my bed or not. Don't rush me, Ben. I've been looking at those cars for five minutes now. They're not going to change. I lose this hand. I lose everything I've got. All right. I'll call you. With two pair, queens and fours. Satisfied? That breaks me. Don't worry about a thing, Clem. It it's too good. I'll give you another chance. Yeah. You owe me 20 matches. Thanks, Clem. Well, I guess it's my deal. How much more coffee? It sounds good. Now, will you hush up and listen for a minute? I didn't pressure him. He pressured me. He needs somebody real bad. You can't find a job. Bank teller? Bank teller? Well, then, did you tell him uh, I'm, I'm good with figures and that I kept the books? I mentioned it. I mentioned it. And whatever I didn't mention, you can tell him yourself tomorrow. You have an appointment with him in the morning. Bank teller. That's a perfect job. Oh, Ben, I don't know how to bank it. Oh, you don't have to. I'll see you at the bank at 10 in the morning. Yeah, you bet. Well, I'm kind of envious of you. Here I am getting up at 5 o'clock every morning, and you start out with banker's hours. I'll see you in the morning. Yeah, see you. Yeah. A bank teller. I'm going to be a bank teller. Bank teller. Mama? Hey, Mama? Come in. Oh, too early, John? Oh, no, not at all, Ben. Bring him in. Bring him in. Bring out my mind with this paper. Uh, John, this is, uh, George Marshall. Mr. Flint? How do you know, Mr. Marshall? Sit down. Have you, um, have you ever worked as a teller before, Mr. Marshall? Uh, no, sir, I haven't. What kind of work have you been doing? A uh, circus? Clown, acrobat. Well, I was looking for an experienced teller. I'm very good with figures, and I've been keeping books for the circus, too. I've been used to handling large sums of money. Yes, well, uh, that's a great deal more to being a teller than just handling money. I'm sure I could do the job if I just had the chance. Yes, well, I need somebody right now. But, John, I don't think it would take George long to catch on. Maybe if I, uh, if I could teach him, but I just don't have time. You can see all this paperwork I have here. I wouldn't ask for any regular salary until I I'm could... sorry, Mr. Marshall. It's, uh, it just won't work out. Look, John, 
You just don't understand. You told me yesterday you couldn't find anyone. Don't you understand, Ben? I must have an experienced man. You knew perfectly well. He was not an experienced teller. And yesterday that was fine with you. At least give him a chance. I can't have that man in my bank. What would the customers think? What have the customers got to do with you hiring a teller? He's a midget. And I am not running a sideshow. I am running a bank. He's a man looking for a job. I don't think people will be comfortable having him around. Well, it's not the customer you're worrying about, is it? It's how you feel. Look, Ben, I don't want to argue with you. If he's done all right with the circus, if he wants to work, let him work with his own kind. His own kind? Yes, circus people, sideshow exhibits, drifters, hustlers. I don't trust them. I don't want them around. I'm sorry this had to happen. I'm, not, I'm not sorry at all. I better get my things in order. Be canceling my account tomorrow. Man, there's no reason we can't do business together. Yes, there is. I can't trust you. Why not? They have black hair. George. Oh, I knew. As soon as I went into the office, I knew. I'm sorry. Don't be. I have to get back. See, can't this cattle drive shouldn't take more than about three weeks. Or less than that, if we're lucky. <laughs> well, I hope so. <laughs> Confess, Ben. Mrs. Marshall told me. Did he say why he did it? No, nope, just told me he did it. We've got almost all the money back. He only bought a few things. Some food, a dress, and the biggest rag doll I ever did see. Can I talk to him? Of course. easier to steal the money than to ask for my help. No. But why, George? Why? I don't know, Ben. <sighs> because I wanted to feel like a big man for a while. Like I did when I was a boy. I'd stand up on a box and feel big. Well, you're not a boy anymore. You're a man. You tell them that, Ben. You tell them out there. See what I can do. Where do we stand? It's all up to Flint. He's got the bank. 
bank's money back, except for the $18 George spent. All he has to do is drop the charges. Thank you. Mm, ham and cheese. Well, this is going to be a sandwich. Yes? Annie, uh, you and Doris better run along now. Daddy has business. I hope you like your sandwich, Dick. I'm sure I will. You run along. Goodbye, Mr. Cartwright. necessary. I was right. You were wrong. As simple as that. Yes, I think so, don't you? I think we ought to examine the circumstances of why he stole. Then the fact is, he did steal. Yes, but he, he needed food. Not for himself, but for his family, his newborn baby. I'm sorry he got himself into this, but uh, what do you expect me to do? I don't expect you to do anything, John. I'm asking you to drop the charges against him. Do what? Drop the charges and give him another chance. If not for him, for his baby. I can't do that, man. Why not? Well, I think it's obvious. John, most of the money's been returned. This, any, anything left over, I'll, I'll make up the difference. Then the money has nothing to do with it. The fact of the matter is, he stole. Now, you can't justify that. You can't tell me that's right. Of course, I wouldn't dream of it. Neither would he. Just asking for a little compassion for a man who's just lost his wife, who has a brand new baby daughter. He didn't have to steal. He tried to get a job and he couldn't. You ought to know that. Ah, yes, I knew he'd get around to that. It was my fault because I didn't give him a job. Well, I didn't force him to steal. It was in him. I tried to tell you that, Ben. Yes, you did. You did try to tell me that. I almost forgot. He's a thief because he's smaller than you are. If that's possible. Ben, I told you yesterday, he should live with his own kind. If God had meant us all to live together, he would have made us all the same. Well, you may be right. And I may be very wrong. And maybe you know something I don't. You see, I don't know how tall God is. Can you hear me? It's Joe Cartwright. I'm scared. I know you are, honey. Don't you worry, we'll get you out. Can you see the rope? Yes. Can you 
grab hold of it. Don't you worry, honey. We'll get you out. I'd say she was down another 25, 30 feet. There's water seeping in. You can dig out the sides a little. You afraid to take a chance? That shaft's ready to collapse any minute. How about a parallel escape tunnel? There's no time for that. You heard him. There's water seeping in. Down. We're doing everything we can. I bet George could make it. What's that, Ben? I was just thinking. I bet George Marsha could make it all the way down to her. You think he'd do it? Of course he'll do it. I'll, I'll drop the charges against him. I'll give him money, anything. All right, get some buckets. Keep the water level down. Come on, come on. Come on, get him. Let's go. You ask him, Ben. You're his friend, please. George, has been an accident. Not my baby. No, no, your baby's fine. It's a little girl, eight years old. She fell down a ventilation shaft in an old mine. Joe tried to get to it, but it was too narrow for him. George, it's John Flint's little girl. Well, well, why didn't he ask me? I think he was afraid to. Afraid you might say no. What do you think, Ben? I think we'd better hurry. Well, unlock the cell and get me out of here. Ben, read the keys. I told you he'd help us if I let him off. Didn't get a chance to tell him that. I'm gonna lose my sides down there. They're pretty bad. When I get the rope around her, I'll signal with two pulls.
Thank you. Not for you, for her. City, I can catch up with the circus. John? Ben? May I come in? George? How's your little girl? Oh, she's fine. She's fine. Doc says her arm is not even broken. Good. I came out to see if you'd come to work for me at the bank. No. George. Mama, please. I told you before. You don't owe me anything. But that's not why I'm offering you the job. I then why? I'm still the same man I was yesterday, Mr. Flint. I'll get these things loaded. something they're really not. Oh, here, let me help you. There we are. Well, I guess, uh, you're pretty good getting back to the circus, huh? Yeah. At least when people laugh at you there, you'll be getting paid for it. I guess I was just as wrong as your mother trying to push you into something that's too tough for you to handle. But you get to feeling sorry for people. What? I said, you get feeling sorry for people. You know, like you being a midget and trying to live like regular folks. Oh, so that's why you wanted to help me, huh? Because you felt sorry for me. I don't need your pity, Ben. And a job at the bank, I could have handled it. I could have handled it just fine. Well, don't get mad at me, George. I told you it was my fault pushing you into it, you know. It'd be no different from me trying to live like a midget. You think we're so different, huh, you and I? Well, aren't we? No. And I think because I'm small, I can't feel things as much as you can. I can't laugh or cry. God, I'm a man. And prove it, George. You said you were the same man as you were yesterday. All right. If you could do the job yesterday, you can still do it today. Now, Flynn only offered me that job because he thinks he owes me something. We all owe each other something. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be tough. People are still going to point and laugh. It's going to take guts. A lot of guts. But if you show them, George, if you show them, then maybe the next man who comes down the road and looks a little different from the rest of us, maybe he'll stand a better chance. Don't throw away that chance because some of us have been small.
guess I couldn't. Turn a man down for being small. <laughs> I guess not. <laughs>